Do you guys remember chick flicks? Christians used to promote them. They were interesting comics in black and white that had a message. And that message was that you need to devote your life to Jesus. And one of the most uh, famous chick flicks was that of some people playing Dungeons and Dragons. And the girl is actually possessed by the game. And uh, she ends up casting mind bondage spells on her father. But luckily, the mother snaps her out of it and uh, brings her back to Jesus. So th that was kind of the very cringe propaganda that uh, you would have when I grew up. And now there's a different type of propaganda that I see more and more often. And it's in the form of things that never happened. I like to call it woke porn. Uh, like things that make the writer feel good. And in a bizarre sense of twist, they're actually well received within the progressive community. I mean, people give these thumbs ups, they give them hearts, even though it's so obvious that they don't happen. For some reason, people are promoting these uh, to the point where you get to see them everywhere. But uh, okay, fine, let's analyze one of them. So a waiter comes up and says, oh, a mother-daughter dinner, how nice. To which the daughter says, actually, I'm not her daughter, I'm a non-binary, and my gender is still evolving through a complicated series of identities and ideas. The waiter is speechless, to which the mother says she is being silly. No, I am not, you are just being close-minded. The table next to us, starts to clap then the restaurant claps you know like that type of thing but uh you know like whether or not this is legit i, I just want to analyze the s's because i think it's very interesting so you have a person which is trying to be nice and not only that but this person is obviously not not the at the top of society he's not a ceo he's not someone that's wealthy he's not a politician he's a waiter and he's actually paid to be nice. You know, it's a hard job, very high turnover. And because he is being nice, the social justice activist gets to be an asshole towards him. So it is the inversion of common sense. It is the idea that assholes are now being treated like saints and paraded. While people who are on the working class, who are on the lower uh, class of society, uh, are being despised. They're being viewed as the villains. And you're going to notice this motif in almost every one of these uh, things that didn't happen. But not only that, you also have the motif of the child lecturing the parents. So in Romania, we actually have a saying, don't teach daddy how to have kids. It makes sense, you know, like, you don't tell your father how to have kids, right? But for some reason, uh, in progressive ideology, the children are the wise ones, the children are the educated ones, the children are the enlightened, and it's the parents that are bigoted, the parents that are reactionary, it's the parents that are evil, who are stuck in their old ways, who are close-minded... And you get to notice this uh, happening several times in history, in fact. So the first time you get to see it is in the French Revolution. You get to see it um, with Mao's Cultural Revolution. You also get to see it in um, the uh, formation of the Soviet Union when uh, the, the Bolsheviks had their revolution. That's when you have the children that are being considered enlightened. Because normally you have the idea of the wise old men or, or the wise old people. It's because they, they have lived experience, so they're a lot wiser than the new generation. But when you have a revolution, uh, and that is when the new generation is uplifted and they're considered to be much more intelligent. Uh, wisdom is being thrown out in uh, pursuit of intelligence or intellectualism. So uh, that, that's why you get this. And you can see that uh, the daughter in this uh, fictional scenario, she's being an asshole to the mother, and she's being an asshole with the waiter. And this is what the ideology gets to offer. Y you can be an asshole to people and get away with it. So in any circumstance, a person that's an asshole to one waiter is being looked down upon. I mean, a waiter is paid to be nice to you. There, 
you, you do, you're not in an equal relationship when you enter a restaurant. You're the customer, the waiter is there to serve you. The waiter can't talk back at you. The waiter can't give you snark. And if he does, he gets fired. So from that interaction, the waiter has everything to lose and he, he can't do anything to you. Which is why it's considered improper to be rude to the staff. Unless, of course, the staff deserves it. But in this case, he doesn't deserve it. But usually what they do is they try to equate words with violence. So basically the waiter, uh, just by having this microaggression, he deserves the wrath of the daughter. And the other interesting thing is the microaggression, which is an interesting concept that is also created by social justice. So when people are trying to be nice, like if they will say something like, wow, V, I really like your English. Uh, I didn't know you don't speak English as a main language. Okay, that's a microaggression. Even though that person is just being nice to me, even though that person is just trying to give me a compliment because learning another language is difficult, that is a microaggression, and now this gives me power over that person. Now I can be rude, I can be disrespectful, I can be an asshole towards that person for no reason whatsoever. It's what a sociopath would want. Right? So this is an ideology that sociopaths can use in order to gain power and dominate over other people simply because they, they said a bad phrase or they weren't aware that what they're saying is uh, a microaggression, which is why it's called a microaggression, right? Because it's not something that's aggressive, but it is something that allows you to bully people. Um, and the, the phrase that I have is like, oh, if you gave me a microaggression, then I guess I owe you a micro apology. And uh, otherwise, you need to be careful because we can call the micro police and they can put you in the micro prison for a micro sentence over the micro harm that you've done. You know, like th this is the correct solution to this. Just mock and ridicule. Because uh, they, they can try to bully you and they can try to do everything, but they, they can't take away your laughter. So, like in this situation, you can say, let me guess, the mother was J.K. Rowling. Or you can say, oh, the reason they clapped is because the father said that the daughter was being silly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it is uh, so obvious. And, I mean, it even got it to the point where you have a meme and then they all clap. Because th there were so many journalists... And so many social justice activists which told stories from their life and it ended with, and then people started clapping. It's, like, it's so painfully obvious that, that it didn't happen. And yet, no leftist calls these people out on it. Either they ignore it or they thumb up or, or they heart. I mean, recently I saw a journalist which was talking about how his five-year-old daughter asked uh, him about uh, January the 6th. And I'm like, dude, Really? Really, that happened. Like, your, your daughter, your five-year-old kid asked you about politics. Interesting. What, what can I say? Uh, but people believe it, right? Like, if you don't believe it, I guess you're a conspiracy theorist. You're, you're insinuating that the journalists lie. Let me know what you think, though. And I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care.